Hello and welcome to Keys TV News, live on keysnews.net. I'm Tiffany Sweeney. And I'm Tom Rowland. A man has been charged following two sex attacks on two young women in Manchester. Brian Paul Ferguson from Beswick has been charged with two counts of attempted sexual assault, occasioning actual bodily harm and common assault. Both uh, women were grabbed from behind but fortunately managed to break free. It's been announced that Salford Crescent Station is to open new access from Seaford Road. The new walkway allows for disabled access and a lift. This is the first milestone for the redevelopment of the station. A protest against the bedroom tax has been taking place at Manchester Piccadilly Gardens. The new scheme is expected to affect more than 600,000 um, 600, households across the UK. Here is Amelia Minchiver with the story. Around 1,000 Manchester residents gathered at Piccadilly Gardens last Saturday to protest against the government's controversial bedroom tax. Some people were in wheelchairs or walked with sticks. Others wore army uniforms, but they all spoke with one voice. The voice of the vulnerable, the suffering, the poor, the disabled. The protesters called for the government to act the bedroom tax that will cut benefits for people with a spare room. And for some of us who do go out to work, we can't afford to pay our bills. Some of us are struggling as to whether we pay the gas, we pay the electricity, or we put food on the table for our children. This is the situation that we're living in. Manchester is amongst the worst areas to be hit by David Cameron's proposed new scheme, which is expected to be introduced in April. Councillor Jim Battle also joined the rally. This is not the society that we want in Manchester. It's not the society we want in our country. We know that we've probably got one of the most vicious and nasty governments in living memory. We have got to say that enough is enough and this is the start of a big change in our society. The angry protesters made a big walk around the town hall and even rushed into Barclays on Market Street shouting, we pay taxes, why don't you? The next protest will take place at Albert Square on the 30th of March. David Cameron promised to examine any individual cases for those affected by the benefit cut. Oops, oops, oops. The late BBC producer Charles Parker is well known for his radio ballads. Today, the annual Charles Parker Day is being held at the University of Salford in Media City. Damon Walton reports. Today is the 10th anniversary of the Charles Parker Day, 2013. The event, held every year, is to celebrate the work of the late BBC producer Charles Parker. Today, here at Media City UK, in Salford at the University of Salford. Many people, writers, producers, have turned up to listen to inspirational talks from those involved with the Charles Parker Day Trust. Well, the thing about the, the Charles Parker Day is that, that we get as many radio producers, as many practitioners here to come along as possible. So it's a chance to meet them for students. It's a fantastic opportunity to actually meet people that are making these programmes and programmes of a particular style as well. They are mainly feature programmes and they're creative feature programme. So we try and get as many creative feature makers to come along to the day as possible. Because it's a great opportunity to meet these people, ask them about yeah, their jobs and, and improve their own work. Yes. It consists of many recordings that Charles Parker made, it consists of his books, it consists of scripts of radio programmes and indeed of some theatrical events that he was involved with, in particular with the Banner Theatre. And the trust exists really to ensure that the value that is within those archive elements is properly exploited, that it's made available to students who want to know more about um, social developments within Charles Parker's lifetime, who want to know about the art of making radio features, and also about uh, the great heritage of, uh, of folk music with which um, Charles became so intricately involved through his association in particular with Ewan McCall and Peggy Seeger. I think it's really important because it sort of keeps the whole art of feature making going, you know, telling people's stories, all that sort of more um, produced and more, art not artistic, artistic sounds a bit pretentious, but it's a creative side of radio. Closing the event at 4 p.m. will be the presentation of the Charles Parker Day Prize, the best student radio feature 2013 submitted by students from all over the UK. Damon Walton reporting for Keys News. A new photographic display by award-winning British war photographer Sean Smith will be unveiled at the Imperial War Museum North. 
Marking 10 years since the start of the 2003 Iraq war, Smith has documented the war in Iraq for the Guardian newspaper since then. The display will reveal previously unpublished uh, photographs on public display for the first time. Who's been out in Iraq for uh, much of the last 10 years, from before the war started in 2003, right through to 2008, and his images are quite, uh, quite extraordinary, showing the impact of the war on civilians in Iraq. Very kind of the Imperial War Museum in Manchester uh, to want to uh, show some of them. Sort of. An amazing show of lights took place at Salford Quays last night. Emily Bergen has more. The speed of light has been described as a human piece of art. It involved 120 runners dressed in LED suits and is based on the interaction between movement and light. The event is organised by MVA, a registered Scottish arts charity, and is seen as a piece of abstract art on the grandest scale. Hundreds of people turned up to watch the event and cameramen and professional photographers came to capture the streams of light. Using special light suits, the MVA has choreographed special running patterns to create visually stunning light effects. The Speed of Light was commissioned by Keys Culture and is around for another two days. Speed of Light has also been to Edinburgh and Yokohama in Japan, making the show a global sensation. The runners run over bridges and across streets around Salford Keys, stopping in various places to perform. They stopped on the Lowry Plaza, outside the Imperial War Museum, and finished on the Media City Piazza, as well as other locations. The event was surprisingly quiet and reflective, and many people are expected to come and join the crowds tonight. Emily Bergen, Keys TV News. Now it's coming up to that time of the year again where runners from all over the world attempt the 26 miles of the London Marathon. Sam Bond is no stranger to the event, having ran it two times before for the charity Save the Rhino, but this year he's deciding to run it a little differently. Sam joins us here live now, so hi Sam, thanks for coming in. Thank you. So why Save the Rhino? Uh, I've always been interested in wildlife conservation. I think rhinos are pretty impressive creatures. Um, and there's only 28,000 of them left in the world now. Uh, the Javan rhino, which is the most the rare spe rarest species, there's only 50 of them left now. And so Save the Rhino really need funds to sort of protect them, uh, fund anti-poaching patrols and educational programs, and look at the illegal trade in rhino horn, which is why they're being poached. And um, talk us through the costume choice. It's quite an interesting one. Yeah, as Tom said, I've run <laughs> twice before, uh, so this time I thought I'd go for a bit more of a challenge. <laughs> So um, yeah, it's mainly uh, to try and get some more sponsorship. I thought I'd wear one of the famous costumes. I think Save the Rhino have had them in the marathon for about, uh, I think almost 20 years or so now. Uh, so yeah, I thought it was about Is it heavy to go. wear? Yeah, how it's heavy about, is it? About 10 kilograms. It's really? 10 kilograms? Yeah. The older ones are 15. This is one of the newer costumes, so it's not as bad, but it's pretty heavy. So yeah, wow. it should be a bit of a challenge. Okay, so as this year is a bit different for you, do you have a game plan for, you know, for the marathon? I'm trying to train as much as I can alongside study and, and etc. But um, I'm doing okay. I'm running sort of 10, 15 miles on average at the moment. In the suit or? In Not the yet. Table? The suit's just arrived. I've borrowed it for a couple of weeks. So I'm going to start training it soon so people might start seeing a rhino running Who around Media it, City. Though? I'm not sure there's a costume designer who do them for Save the Rhino. Because it's obviously but, uh, you know, quite an impressive costume. Does it it's cost quite, quite cool. Long? I think they cost about two grand or something to make. £2,000? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I wow. might be wrong on that. But yeah, they're quite expensive to get okay. made. But yeah, I need to start running around Media City and at night training, so you could join me if you like, Tom. Tiffany, I'm training. Join? I don't really know what animal I'd like to be. I'd like to be an animal, though. Yeah, it has to be a rhino for, say, the rhino, though. I know, true. <laughs> but rhinos are amazing. They are very nice. Have you ever seen one? I've seen them in the wild, yeah. Black and white rhino. Really? In, in really? South Africa, sort of, yeah. They're quite impressive. I think it'd be a shame if they were lost, so. So yeah. how can people, you know, sponsor you for this? Uh, you can go to, it's Virgin Money Giving forward slash Samuel Bond, and people can sponsor me on there. I've got a page explaining why I'm doing it, etc. So. Yeah, I'd be really grateful for any sponsorship. I just think it's, I think it's worth it. It's uh, going to be a painful run, so. Excellent. Yeah. Thank okay, you. Okay, Sam, thanks for coming in. Thank you, thanks for having okay. me. Healthy eating seems to always be in the headlines. However, a restaurant in the Trafford Centre has gone for an alternative way of raising awareness. Tom Lilly went to find out more. Sail Sharks' achievements on the rugby field are well known. Today, though, the players tackled a rather different challenge. Saffron Restaurant in the Trafford Centre has started a new healthy eating campaign. The campaign aims to show that in order to eat healthy, you don't always have to sacrifice on taste. If people had a little bit more knowledge about different ways of cooking, different ingredients, um, well then they might be able to cook meals just as good at home. And that's why we got the two guys down here tonight to do a, where we're going to teach them how to cook an amazing tasting meal that's 100% healthy. 
There's all the McDonald's and the Burger Kings and stuff like that, but you know they're nice now and again. But you know, realistically, you want to you want to look after yourself. Saffron kindly sponsoring Tom uh, as a player sponsor at the club, and uh, I'm living with him, he said, uh, "I'll come along and uh, and come and do this uh, cooking challenge." You know, especially in, in elite sport, nutrition plays a huge part of, of our sort of daily routine, and to to be able to sort of eat out in the evening in a place which offers us that healthy option, you know, it's brilliant for us. As today's event has proven, healthy eating is the way forward. This is Tom Lilly reporting for Keys TV News. Now for all the sport, we have Thomas Stegan live. Hi Tom. So what's happening in rugby this uh, weekend then? Um, first of all, Salford City Reds uh, take on St Helens, they're travelling to St Helens. Um, Salford is still not doing very well. Um, then we've got Warrington Wolves uh, going to Huddersfield Giants. These are both tonight. On Saturday, uh, Wigan Warriors take on Vidal Vikings. On Saturday in Rugby Union, Sale take on Baths at uh, Salford, the Salford City Stadium. OK. Yeah. And it's a big week for international football, Tom. So what's going on with that? Yes, international football. Tonight, Scotland take on Wales. Uh, Northern Ireland entertain Russia at home. Um, but there could be some, some problems with that, with the snow in Belfast. Is this for the World Cup qualifiers? These are for the World Cup okay. qualifiers, yes. Um, and England travelled to San Marino, looking to carry on their win against Brazil in the friendly that they played a few months ago. Um, so hopefully, you know, England can build on that okay. and qualify again. Excellent. So talking about uh, you know, um, England, Michael Owen has renounced his retirement, unfortunately. Yes, yes. Michael Owen, the man who started his career um, burst on the scene at Liverpool as a 17-year-old boy um, and then went to the World Cup in 1998 um, and scored an unbelievable goal against Argentina, solo run, and then again in 2001 in scored a hat-trick against Germany. Um, scored 40 goals in 89 appearances. Was that in the 5-1 win? That was in the 5-1 win, yeah. yeah. Um, he scored yeah, 40 goals in 89 appearances for England, would have probably beaten he, uh, any record for England uh, if it hadn't been for injury, which he's had since about 2005. Um, he, he, um, he moved to Stoke this season and it's not been very successful. Um, so he's decided to, to give up football and he's going to concentrate on his horse race. Like he loves horse racing, so he's going to concentrate on his he? horse race. He's only 33 years old. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So it's very young for a footballer of his age to retire. Yeah. To retire, yeah. And what are the changes at the FA this week, Tom? Um, former BBC director, uh, Greg Dyke, um, who is the currently Brentford's uh, director, um, is to step in as uh, director of football um, for David Brinson, uh, currently on, uh, depending on uh, everything going through. OK. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, Cheers. Tom. Now, you may recall last Friday, Keys News held a 12-hour news marathon in aid of Comic Relief. Now, we are, uh, sorry, we are pleased to say we made it to 12 hours without going off air, and we raised a total of £455. We'd like to thank everybody who donated, and here is a special clip as we hit 12 hours. Now, that's it from us here at Keys TV News. It brings us to a close of our 12-hour marathon in aid of Comic Relief. It's been a groundbreaking event for all of us here. We've had some great fun, heard some great music, and raised more than £335. Thanks to all who, sorry, thanks to all who, those who have supported us today. You can tell that we're all very, very tired. We hope you've enjoyed being with us, and don't forget you can still donate to Comic Relief by visiting our website, keysnews.net. Finally, remember you can see our weekly Keys TV news bulletin every Friday at 1.30, again by visiting our website. Oh, we so from all of us here at Keys TV News, thank you for watching. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>